Mung, Kia ora, and welcome to another episode of 3 Minute Thursdays. Today we're diving deeper into the process of adding music into your project in Final Cut Pro. Though this one is not specific to Final Cut, it will work with pretty much any other editing software. Specifically, we'll take a look at these three things. First, we're gonna find some nice music on the internet. In this case, we're gonna be using Soundstripe. Second, we will edit to the beat. And lastly, we'll take a look at how to maintain the beginning and the end of the song when you realize you don't have enough footage for the song that you decided to use. Three tips in three minutes. Sounds doable, let's do it. I find all my music on Soundstripe and this video isn't sponsored by them in any way, shape or form. It's just that when I purchased my annual subscription, they were a lot cheaper than what all the others cost, like Epidemic Sound, which is probably the biggest one, Premium Beat and Artlist. They're all fantastic resources. I just picked Soundstripe. I like the UI, I like the way of finding songs and I like the fact that they have a dark mode. And let's take a look at Soundstripe together and see how we find our music. Okay, so this is what you get when you land on the website once you've signed up for your free trial or purchased an annual subscription. Um, if yours looks a little bit different than mine, it's probably because I have the dark mode on, which you can just turn on by clicking on your profile up here and then switching over to dark mode like that. I just find it's a little bit easier on the eyes. So at this point, you wanna have reviewed your footage and have a rough idea of the video you wanna build and how you want the video to feel or how you want the audience to feel when they watch your video. In other words, do you want a fast action paced electronic music type of video with a bunch of flashing scenes or do you want something more beautiful and ambient with a lower beat count that enables you to show longer scenes. Essentially the beat count matters or the rhythm or the speed because it ultimately determines how many clips you'll need for your video. You could almost say the faster the music the more short clips you need and the slower the music the longer the clips need to be but you don't need as many. The easiest way to find something on Soundstripe is to just head over to song and then search by mood, genre or pace or at least that's how I do it. The mood that we want to portray here to the audience is something more like inspiring, ambient, beautiful, like I don't want an action paced drone video. I just have drone clips, right? So maybe here inspiring, sounds good. So we have a few songs here. We just tap on them and we start listening and we'll see if that is something that we like. Additionally, we can just head over to genre and cinematic is always good because we're trying to build a cinematic drone video. So cinematic help and then see what we have here. Also another good idea is to always, when you play a song, just jump to the middle so you get an idea of what the whole song feels like just to make it a little bit easier for ourselves just like let's add pace and we want to do a slow pace and let's see what these sound like okay so once you've found the song that you think is going to be a winner all you want to do is click the license button say what type of content you're making in this case it's just social media youtube and we will just call this plymouth evening by air and click generate license and then you can download the mp3 or the wave which is usually higher quality so we'll go with that one now let's move on to editing to the beat of the song Now we're in Final Cut Pro and we've imported our footage, including our audio track. If you don't remember from last week's video, the easiest way to find your audio is to just go over to your smart collections, audio only, and there's your song. So the first thing you wanna do is to just grab your song and drag it onto the timeline. Yes, don't even worry about those pretty drone clips for now. We'll get to those in a minute. For now, we're just gonna be working with the song. If your view looks somewhat like this, you do wanna change this because you wanna see your audio levels as much as possible. So if you're not using Final Cut Pro, you're gonna have to find out where to do this in your editing software. For Final Cut, you just click this little button here. You get to see these different clip display options. And since we don't really care about the video right now, we can either choose this one or this one and then make this nice and large so you can see the different spikes 
in the audio because we'll be working with just a song for a minute here. So the first thing you want to do is just play the song, listen to it from beginning to end. And ideally, you while you do that, you look at the waveforms and try to identify the cadence of the beat so you know where you want to place your markers and where you want to have your videos cut. Just like in a cooking show, I've already done this. So I have a rough idea of where I want to place my markers. Now that you've familiarized yourself with the song, all you want to do is hit space to start playing it. So now that you've listened to your song at least once and you're somewhat familiar with it, all you want to do is once again um, play the song by pressing space on your keyboard and every time you hear a beat or a spike in the music at the cadence that you have determined for yourself when you first listen to the song you want to press M on your keyboard the first time I listened to the song, I've actually counted the, um, the beats and after a certain period, so there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then there's, there's a higher note. So you can see here one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, high note, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, high note. So basically every seven beats you want to place a marker here and you've also got the nice visual indicator. I'm just going to go through the rest of the song by pressing M on my keyboard every time I, I see and hear a spike like this. I'm just going to go ahead and finish the rest of the song here. So you want to do that for the whole song. Don't just skim out halfway through because doing the whole song now in the beginning before you do anything else will save you so much time and headaches later. Trust me on this one. So here comes the fun part. Now you can see that you need about 19 clips because of 19 gaps between the big markers here that are about seven to eight seconds long. So all you need to do is browse through your footage and identify the parts that you want to use, the parts that are smooth, and press I on your keyboard to make an in point and O on your keyboard to make an out point, and then simply press Q to add it on top of your timeline. Q adds it to where your playhead is currently located. So mine was in the beginning of the clip. So I'm just gonna move my cursor over here and you can and already see that I'm already going over some of the markers. So let me just do a little bit more footage here. In point, out point, Q. And to make my life a little bit easier, I'm gonna place my marker here. We're gonna keep going. In point, out point, Q. And one more. In point, out point, Q. And now you can see down here in the timeline that the clips I've selected go way over the markers. So for this, I'm gonna switch my view to the video view. Um, I wanna see a little bit of the audio, but not too much. I'm mostly interested in the video at this point. I'm gonna go in here by pressing Command Plus on my keyboard. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. And here I can see my markers and I can still nicely see my audio. So if I play this back, so I probably want it to cut right here. So I can either do this with a mouse like so, or pressing Command Z and having my playhead right here, I can simply press Alt right bracket, which will cut the end of the song to where my playhead is right now. So I'll just move this one up right here. My marker is not exactly precise, but that's why I'm still showing my audio levels here so that I can see where I need to cut my clips. So I'm going to truncate this once again with alt right bracket. I'm going to play this back. Cool. So just keep doing the in out drag on timeline in out drag on timeline to fill in all the gaps between the markers and then you're done. Now, what if you didn't shoot enough footage? Little tip on the side here. Don't repeat your clips or for that matter, don't even repeat similar clips. If people really like your video, they will go back to the beginning and rewatch it. But don't show the same clips or similar clips over and over again, because while it might look really, really cool to you, for other people, seeing the same stuff over and over again is most likely rather boring and they will click off. So don't repeat your footage. Which brings us to our last point, which is to maintain the beginning and the end of the song while making the whole video shorter. Before I show you this last tip and you find this useful so far, do me a favor and hit that thumbs up button. 
would be highly appreciated. And for that, I say Dankeschön. What you ideally want to do is keep the beginning of the song, especially in our case, where we put this whole video together and only realize now that we don't have enough clips to fill the end of the video. But you also want to keep the end of the song. So you get a nice beginning to end experience as the viewer. Okay, you can see this is how far I made it in the editing process. However, we really don't have enough footage. You can see here at the very end, I found a really nice end clip flying towards the sun, but it certainly doesn't cover all these tiny little bits between those markers. So what we want to do here is cut out this whole fast part of the track and then maintain the end of the song and merge it with this part. So let's see how we can do that. So first thing again, just bring up your audio controls up here and select this option and maybe make your clips a little bit larger so that we can see our audio spikes. Now we have that, we press B on our keyboard to bring up our slice tool and we wanna slice it somewhere around here and somewhere around here where we wanna bring the song back. Now we can get rid of that. So if we play this back, that's a little bit choppy. So what we want to do here is zoom in, take a look at how the audio flows. So you can see that here it goes down. And let me bring this down below so that it's a little bit easier to see. And this is a pretty rough spike. So maybe we want to skip all the way until here and slice it here. Get rid of that bit. And now you can see if I brought this back in here that the audio almost aligns. So if we did something like this. It already sounds a lot better. Maybe what we want to do is make this a little bit shorter and fade this in and have this fade out. Beautiful. And that's it. And the other important part obviously is here where the song ends, we want our clip to end like that. What you can also do, but that's probably more for a later video, if you're using sound effects already, then you find a place in your video where you're using a sound effect and you do the masking there because then the sound effect will hide the transition of the song. And there you have it. We found some music on the internet, we imported it into Final Cut Pro, we edited it to the beat of the music, and we even masked the fact that we shortened our song because we realized we didn't have enough footage. That's it for today, guys. I hope this was useful to you. If it was and you're into this kind of stuff or you just want to see pretty drone videos, consider subscribing to the channel. There's going to be new drone related stuff every week. I will see you in the next one. Vielen Dank fürs Zuschauen. Bis zum nächsten Mal.